Peter Jennings reporting. Pot of Gold will continue in a moment. ABC Late Night tonight. On Nightline, the latest trouble. These the engineers of the Pontiac Grand Am. Pot of Gold continues. We are over southern Georgia with a state-sponsored drug task force. We came down here just when this year's outdoor marijuana was ready to be harvested. It didn't surprise us when the pilots spotted something and started to circle back. But when we landed, what surprised us was how marijuana is changing rural farm communities. When planted outdoors, marijuana can grow 10 or 12 feet high. The plants here were near maturity. They were tied down to the ground to prevent them from being too easily seen. 151. There were several hundred plants here, and this seemed like it was a big day for the local police. Here, you two squat down. That's the county sheriff, Bucky Hayes, on the left, and the local town's police chief, Jimmy Carter, posing with a marijuana plant for a souvenir photograph. On, let me get a couple more. It looked to us like a very strong case. A working irrigation line ran from the marijuana to a farmhouse spigot. Somebody we thought was clearly in trouble. But there was something about the arrest. It all seemed more like a reunion of old friends than a big drug bust. Certainly the farmer, Teddy Boatwright, never seemed to act as if he were in real trouble. Anything up on cigarette lighter? I might need it later on. <laughs> After Boatwright was released on bond, he talked pretty candidly to us about the role that marijuana plays in farm life here. It's been here since the early 70s. I think back then it was mostly just you had these few guys that smoked it. And uh, nowadays it's got to where it's, uh, it's a supplement for... Uh, a lot of people's income and I know a lot of <laughs> your businesses in town don't mind taking the money all the people in this story live in Bacon County Georgia the county seat is Alma about 10,000 people we learned pretty quickly that a lot of people in Bacon County were growing at least some marijuana not to get rich just to get by Almost every farmer around here is struggling trying to make ends meet. And uh, basically it's because of the high price of equipment and the uh, operating expense. Well, we could, we could, could just quit and then Where? I reckon just <laughs> draw welfare. Teddy lives on the farm with his parents, Tuck and Margie. We could, we could apply for welfare, really because we make less than $10,000 a year, we could get a welfare check. But I got a little too much pride for that. Luther Taylor used to be an Alma policeman. Two years ago, Mr. Taylor found out his own son had planted some marijuana. Did you call the sheriff? My wife, me and my wife did, yes sir. Why'd you do that? I didn't believe in it at that time. I didn't think it was right for farmers to grow the stuff. But uh, the way the economy is right now, I wouldn't turn a man in if I walked by his field and see it. Now, you're having financial difficulties yes, at the sir. moment, are you? Yes, sir. Reason enough to grow marijuana? Yes, sir. So you would now grow? Yes, sir, I would. It's illegal. I know that. You used to be a policeman. I know that. Like I say, two or three years ago, I didn't feel that way. But now I do. I honestly do. A few years ago, Gordon Taylor was in a tight spot, and so he grew some marijuana. He pointed out to us that marijuana was the most profitable crop he could plant. Tell me the value of marijuana as a crop. As a crop. Uh, dollar and cents is per plant. Uh, you could generate one pound of marijuana off of a plant, and you could uh, sell that today 
anywhere for $2,500. That one plant. How's that compared to corn? Oh, it's a blow away. It would take you several acres. You would, you, your profit off of corn right now might be $50 an acre. That one plant of marijuana turned you $2,500 with a, a $10 input. That's the only commodity that a farmer's got in South Georgia that he puts a price on. There's no problem putting our price on marijuana. That's thunder we're hearing, of course, but it seems to pretty much reflect the difference between the marijuana price and the corn price. There's a lot of difference. There's a lot of difference. But Gordon, there's one big difference between corn and marijuana. One's legal, one isn't. That's correct. So? I, I don't worry about the illegal part. Not, I, I, you know, illegal part, there's, there's certain chances every fellow takes in life. And you just got to decide what chances you'll take. Not long ago, there was a man who took Bacon County's marijuana farmers head-on. From 1987 to 1993, Chief Deputy Sheriff Larry Tanner went on an anti-marijuana crusade. His own videotapes document how well he did. We didn't plant this dope. Somebody else planted it. Send this guy to jail. Thank you. Tanner employed all the techniques of big city drug cops. People were enticed with reward money to inform on their friends and relatives. He exploited seizure laws. Anything used by a farmer to harvest or transport marijuana, like a barn or a car, he confiscated. When the word went out that Bacon County was a dangerous place to buy marijuana, Tanner took down all the signs that marked the county line, and dealers got busted when they didn't know where they were. The result of all these asset seizures was a much more modern sheriff's office. Five years after I started at the Sheriff's Department, we had all brand new cars. We had four wheelers. We had a computer. Uh, we had bought copy machines, fax machines. Uh, none of this stuff was available in our department when I started. All this from the money from seized assets of people who were in the marijuana business. And then there began a campaign against you. Yeah, that's when I, when I qualified to run for sheriff and uh, uh, these dealers that I was putting a hurt on them. The money people uh, decided that uh, they didn't need me in that office, and they orchestrated a plan to get rid of me. Uh, I may be wrong about the guy, but I don't like him. I never have liked him. Gerald Anderson was one of those farmers growing marijuana who wanted to get rid of Larry Tanner. He painted a message for Tanner and his chief investigator, Donald, on the roof of his barn. Suck this, Larry and Donald, it reads. Unfortunately for Anderson, when a drug task force pilot read it from the air, he also noticed a few hundred of Anderson's marijuana plants growing nearby. Pretty overt gesture from marijuana grower, right? Stupid, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, you don't draw attention to yourself if, you draw, if you're growing marijuana right next to it, you know? But Anderson was just fined and put on probation. He and other farmers would have the last laugh in Bacon County. When Larry Tanner announced his intention to run for sheriff, they met to organize against him. Yeah, there was a couple meetings like that I went to. I'd rather not say where. And there was pretty good crowds. Talked about uh, who they wanted support for a sheriff. And uh, there were probably 45 people there. That's when they got serious about Mr. Bucky, getting behind Mr. Bucky. Mr. Bucky is Bucky Hayes, and he had two things going for him with the farmers who grew marijuana. For one thing, he was a farmer. For another, his little brother, Timer Hayes, was a known marijuana grower. A lot of people here think that when they were voting for Bucky Hayes for sheriff, they were voting for a man who was going to go easier on marijuana growers than the former deputy sheriff, Larry Tanner, did, who you're running against. What do you say about that? Oh, 
Well, I, I say I made no promises to anybody that I would be easier on anything, marijuana or whatever. Did you think at the time that Tanner was too hard on the growers? Oh, uh, what? That, that's one area there that I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to skip because I just. Uh... And why would you want to skip it? I just am. It may be that Sheriff Hayes doesn't think he can answer that question fairly because one of the people who got busted was Hayes' own brother, Timer. They found 1,700 plants on his property and in his house just two weeks before the election. Did you know Timer was growing? Mm, not for sure. I've never seen it. He lived just down the road? Yes, sir. He lived approximately two miles from it. He had 1,700 plants? Yes, sir. You never knew they were there? No, sir. Larry Tanner posed for the Alma paper with Timer Hayes' confiscated marijuana, but he had seriously misread the people's sentiments on his Get Tough policy, and the publicity backfired. Today, Tanner says the state task force scheduled the bust and didn't tell him. The timing on that bust, and I knew it when it happened, it was bad for me. It would look like that it was timed just before the election to help me. People don't like that. In the summer of 1992, the people of Bacon County overwhelmingly elected Bucky Hayes. Today, Larry Tanner sells used mobile homes. This is a powerful message. Oh, yeah. In Bacon County uh -huh. that 40 or 50, 45 growers can sit together and say that the deputy sheriff's too tough and therefore we don't want him a sheriff. Right. Is that a fair summation? Mm -hmm. There was a district attorney, he's a good friend of mine, I always feel like he was, told me one time that uh, you can only police people to the point that they want to be policed. After you were defeated, mm -hmm. was Bacon County an easier place for marijuana growers to do business? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, they knew that, that nobody would be as aggressive as I was. Why was Larry Tanner able to find so many more growers than you've been able to? I couldn't answer that either. Uh, I don't know where he had better informants or, or what, what the problem is. And how tough were you on marijuana growers after you were elected sheriff? Oh. Or shall I tell you? Tell me. Well, for a year and a half, from January 93, when you came into office until July 9th... I showed the sheriff the statistics given to us by the state's drug task force. In each of the two years prior to Hayes taking office, there had been more than a million dollars worth of marijuana seized in Bacon County. I then showed the sheriff the statistics for his first year in office, 1993. And here is Bacon County in the year after your elected sheriff. Mm -hmm. Zero. I mean, it's not much of a compliment to a law enforcement officer, is it? Not much. No marijuana was seized in his first year and a half as sheriff because Hayes did not even allow the state drug task force to operate in Bacon County. In recent years, he redeputized the state task force and they've eradicated some major plots. But as long as marijuana money is important to the local economy, as long as it buys farm equipment and pays off bank loans, there is no pressure on Bucky Hayes to be a hero. One more thing. Teddy Boatwright, whose plants were found last October, has yet to stand trial. If he is ever tried, it will be in front of a local jury, a jury of his peers. Can you get convicted in front of a jury around here? Yeah. But it's getting harder. Harder and harder to be convicted. Are juries friendly? Yeah. Because they're your neighbors? Yeah. 
Because they're growing too? Yeah. A lot of them is. Because they're they need a family them. is. Some of the family. They ain't a they ain't a whole lot of families that connection somewhere or another down the road in the kinfolks line. But what is connected with it one way or the other? If the government wanted to eradicate all marijuana growing in Bacon County, could they? No. Never. The the only the good thing is is when you when they took five or six million dollars worth out of Bacon County, that made the boys over in Pierce County sure enough proud. Supply and demand. Theirs just went up. Is absolutely right that we must educate our children not to do drugs, including alcohol and tobacco. But that's an obvious policy. We've also learned that marijuana is no longer simply associated with the so-called drug culture. And like it or not, marijuana, marijuana for profit, now has roots in mainstream America. This leads inevitably to a discussion about legalization or tougher laws. That debate is intensifying. What people need to understand is that the current effort to eradicate growing here at home isn't changing things very much except to ensure that the price stays high. Really getting at the people who grow marijuana no longer means closing the borders, but an enormously expensive, invasive door-to-door -door campaign. Which brings us back to that former deputy sheriff in Bacon County. He reminded us that you can only police the people as much as they are willing to be policed. And how much is that? I'm Peter Jennings. Thank you for joining us. Good night. video cassette or transcript of Peter Jennings reporting. Call 1-800-913-3434. This has been a special presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news.